Yes, yes, yes. Hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday. It's a... <laughs> what am I doing? It's a Thursday, January 16th. So that means today is, a, is, of course, vlog day. Let me get my vlog notes out. Let me make you much, much smaller. I actually don't have a whole lot uh, planned for this uh, this Thursday vlog time. Thank you so much for joining me again. The vlogs is always something you can kind of just put on in the background, maybe in a different tab. Go look at Facebook. Go answer emails. Go go look at uh, you know whatever whatever you whatever you look at on the internet. And you can kind of leave me in the background if you'd so like. Uh, these are designed to be somewhat episodic, like my double feature videos, but. Uh, Always have some fun stuff to talk about. Uh, first things first, I do want to give a, a shout out to uh, to Todd of Todd's uh, Reviews. Is it Todd's Reviews dot com? Todd's Reviews dot com. Todd's Reviews dot com. Uh, I just want to give a uh, uh, give a shout out to him. He gave he gave a shout out to me and my dog Gypsy a while back, and uh, I just want to give a. Uh, a shout out to him and his uh, his very cool dog, whose name I can't think of right now. But uh, Todd's doing good work over there in uh, in uh, in Scot. Where are you? Are you in Scotland, Todd? Are you in the UK? All I know is he goes, "Hey guys, Todd here," and he's got that rolling R's. And uh, yeah, so I just want to I just want to give a shout out to Todd because Todd goes Todd does good stuff, and uh, I I always like watching his videos. Um, I do also have some beer tonight, which I which I seem to uh, gravitate towards during my vlog shooting. I feel like I need to have sort of maybe an adult libation to to maybe loosen me up uh, just a little bit. But this is a uh, this is a Belgian beer, and it's a funny story behind this. One of my subscribers emailed me and recommended this beer to me. He said, "Oh, hey, you should try this beer, and it's the Saint Bernardus." Uh, Bernardus, St. Bernardus ABT12 juice, uh, juice, St. Bernardus ABT12 um, beer, and so I was like, oh, I'll have to check that out, that sounds really interesting, and I told my buddy Brandon at work, who we all call Meat, uh, for, I mean, that's a really long story, so I turn, every night when I'm, when I'm work with Meat and we're, we're talking, there's a few subjects that always come up, beer is one of them, absolutely, uh, we always talk about who would win in a fight between the Star Trek Federation and the Imperial Army from Star Wars? I am a firm believer that the Star Trek Federation could annihilate the Imperial Army, but we always have this ongoing discussion uh, in comic books. And so I turn to him and I say, hey, have you heard of the St. Bernardus ABT-12 juice? He's like, oh, yeah, that's that's really hard to get. And so I go on Beer Advocate, and I'm like, wow, this is, I mean, it's scored 100%. This is a world-class beer, and he's like, it's really hard to get a hold of. The guys at Aloha have been trying to get it, this, that, and the other. So I go to my local grocery store. I go to Rayleigh's uh, in Carson City, and they have like 12 bottles of the St. Bernardus ABT-12. And so I was like, huh. so I freaked out, and I texted Meat, and I was like, you got to go to Rayleigh's. They have the St. Bernardus ABT-12, um, and, and, I, and I like it. Uh, I like Belgians in general, but uh, this one is uh, very nice, almost cedary to me, uh, which I like. Very, very tasty. So, quick public service announcement. I posted about this on GrimGreen.com, and I might be beating a dead horse into the ground here, but there are some people out there, let's call them scumbags, who are go around, going around posing as me and as Phil and as Scott and they're emailing vendors pretending to be other people in order to get free vape gear. Um, I've had multiple vendors now forward me emails saying, huh, is this you? And I go, nope. Let me just state this right now to everybody watching and to any vendor who may happen to watch this in the future. I will never approach you to ask for free anything. I have never done it, and it's something I will never do. All of my emails come from nick at grimgreen.com. If you get someone from a Yahoo address or a Gmail address or a Hotmail account or a Yahoo account claiming to be me, you can tell them to go straight to hell. 
because all of my emails come from nick at grimgreen.com. That's my email address. And rest assured, vendors, I will never reach out to you to get free vape gear. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to go, hey, I, I noticed you have this really expensive hybrid. I think you should let me review it because I think it would, you know, I could increase traffic to your site. I have 65,000 subscribers and I think I could really do you a favor here. I'm not that guy at all. It's just never going to happen. So I apologize to those vendors um, who already, unfortunately, have sent out free products. Uh, it makes me look bad and it makes the vendor be taken advantage of and it just breaks my heart that there's people in our community that uh that do this what who who would who would do this that's not even something that's ever come across my mind it's not even it's so far out of my realm of thought i can't imagine someone sitting at home going i'm going to pretend to be phil basardo make an email address email a vendor and ask for free stuff and then they'll send me free stuff and I just go <laughs> I pulled it off it was like a heist that is uh that is ridiculous these people are terrible terrible people I wish nothing but empty tanks dead batteries and uh burnt pro tanks uh in their mouth because uh, it just just makes me upset um another thing that makes me upset is hmm, this is getting a little ranty here uh there's a Twitter page, uh, Chi Public Health. Let me get to their Twitter. Um, I did some angry uh, Twitter bombing last night, or not last night. There they are, Chi Public Health. I'm following them. Urgh. I will uh, link to their uh, Twitter in the uh, <laughs> in the uh, in the vlog notes. Um, tweet at them all the time because they are really, really upsetting me with the stuff that they're posting about vaping. Uh, it's just straight up bad science, bad information. It makes them look really bad. They do not care about the Chicago public health. It is ridiculous. If they did, um, then they wouldn't be posting such nonsense. So I tweeted at them at least, I don't know, could have been... 10 or 15 times and those got retweeted and that's kind of you know a thing you know they might have seen them they might have been annoyed but it's not enough to make a dent so i encourage everyone with a twitter account to tweet at chicago public health which is chi public health just tell them how wrong they are tell them how great vaping is use the hashtag e-cigs save lives that's what i've been using um chicago uh it ha has already or is about to hand down some very strict, uh, much like, unfortunately, like New York City, about vaping in public, vaping in public spaces. You can't vape in a public space. You'd have to just walk out into the middle of the road to vape, uh, which is absurd. I mean, that's not freedom. As I've said before, I'm a freedom guy. I want as much freedom as possible. I want stupid amounts of freedom. And uh, cheap public health is doing nothing nothing to help that um i do have some pretty cool fun stuff let's get on an up note here let's stop being so angry i do have some cool first impressions to talk about and uh don't have any don't have any wah, 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 first impressions i don't have any cool intro music like that first thing on the first impressions list is a hybrid and uh if you're familiar with me uh and you've watched my videos then you might know or you may not know. I'm not a huge fan of Genesis style anything. I just don't like them. I don't like Genesis atomizers and I don't like hybrids. Um, with that said, <laughs> this is a hybrid. This is the Odachi hybrid. Um, I can't remember the fella's name that makes this. It's a uh, Ninja Ninja Vapes Ninja Mods Kidney Puncher sells it. I'll link to their Facebook. Um, Ninja Mods makes the Odachi hybrid, and I don't know what Odachi means, or if I'm even saying it right, maybe it's Odashai, but it's, uh, I'm going to call it the Odachi hybrid. Um, so it's a hybrid. Uh, it's an 18650 hybrid, and uh, 
I started reading up on this as soon as I... This came from a, a third party. It didn't come from Ninja Mods. Someone got this at VaporCon, VaporCon 3, that they just had in Richmond, and they contacted me and said, hey, I got this hybrid. Do you want to try it out for a while and just you know do a video for it, see how you like it, and you can send it back. So this is going back to the original owner after I'm done fiddling with it. But before I said yes, I kind of got online and I started maybe watching a few videos, checking out a few pictures of it. And I thought, you know what, that looks pretty cool. And if nothing else, um, it's another, you know, mod or hybrid that I get to investigate, which I always like doing. I always like really getting into things and report back on for, for those who are maybe interested in it. i uh, been performing okay. Meh? Not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, it's got this interesting adjustable airflow on it. It's like a, a hole with a slash, and you can adjust. You see this little slash right here? Let me get it in the light. You see that slash? That's the adjustable airflow, so you can kind of adjust it left or right or have it fully open. Let's adjust it. Ooh, that's tighter. Anyway, it has an adjustable airflow on it, and uh, the deck on it is kind of small. Um, there's a hole on this side, and a hole. Oh, that's a bigger hole on that side. I'm going to flip this around. But there's a little ring on here, as you can kind of see, with two holes on it, and then that's the deck where you build your uh, you build your coil. And the positive post seems really tall, so I have. Let me try to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wraps of 29 gauge canthal on there, which may or may not be ideal for a 3.7 volt battery, but it seems to be producing vapor okay. I mean, just as good as any dripper, I guess. I have some cotton wick in here, and I've been using the, uh, you know, the, the drippy it upside down method. You can kind of see bubbles traveling up the tank. All right, here comes a bubble bubble and here comes a bubble and and bubble um, and that that's been keeping the wick uh, fairly wet um, I tried using a kick in here and it wasn't it worked but it was really hard to get in and I was really worried that I would never be able to get it out once I got it in there it kind of freaked me out a little bit because uh, the Odachi Hybrid doesn't open from the top. Pardon me, let me wipe off my hands real fast because I did just get juice all over the place. Um, so the, the Hybrid doesn't open from the top. This center post and the top are one unit. Everything happens from the bottom. So when you take the battery in and out, you have to take it out through the bottom. There's no top. So I jammed a kick down in there and I was using it for a while and then I got paranoid and I tried to get it out and man it was a struggle and a half to get it out uh, I was reading people have complained about the uh, the way you adjust the 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 battery like um, you have to spin this little thing on the bottom and it's really touchy and really sensitive so I mean once you get it dialed in it's not that big of a deal but See, I fiddled with it, and now there's a gap on the switch there. So I have to, uh, whoops, it's coming all the way off. So now I have to adjust it. Well, oh, shoot. There it goes. To adjust it back in just a little bit. Nope, now I can hear the battery, battery? The battery rattling around. I shouldn't be taking this long with it. But regardless, it's a little bit little bit finicky to kind of adjust especially if you drop everything see there it goes no rattle basically seamless I'm just gonna leave it right there the button has no locking feature it's a recessed button on the bottom so I find myself I have to press it with a with a finger like this I can't press it with a pinky like that but uh, but yeah so that's the Odachi mod
video will be coming uh, someday, shortly. Why on earth did I close my vlog notes? It's because I have no brains. That's what it is. So next up on the uh, first impressions, this one's going to be real quick. This is the Cool Fire 2. There should be a video of this sooner rather than later, but I did want to do a quick first impressions because so many people asked me about it via Instagram. I posted a picture. I took a... Well, I took this almost this exact setup with me, and I clear thir come on, Nick, and I clear 30B on the Cool Fire 2. And uh, Cool Fire 2, it I mean, it looks like a grenade, it just does. That's what it looks like. It's got a button that does light up when you press the button, and you spin this to adjust the wattage, kind of like you would uh, you would on the iTaste 134. In fact, it, no, it's not the same. Thought it was the same. It's not the same. So let me set this to 10 and a half watts. And, uh, yeah. I'll have a video uh, for the iClear 30B and the Anakin Cool Fire 2 very soon. I was skeptical of this, but this little grenade ball is incredibly comfortable to hold. The button is nice. It's just... It's strange because it's so rounded, but it's just really comfortable to hold and use. Really comfortable to hold and use. Um, the only downside that I see happening is the battery that it runs on because it's a smaller mod. Look at that little 18350 battery, tiny little 800 milliamp hour battery. And it's just, uh, I mean, it takes up that much space inside the mod. It's a small little device. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's if it has a downside, that's going to be the downside. I'm going to take this iClear 30B off of here and put it onto my next first impressions. Oh, this one already has one on here. Okay, well, then I'll just leave this on here. So I posted a picture, little picture, on GrimGreen.com a while back about this. And then uh, eSig Supply contacted me and said, we have these in, I have to send you one. And I was like, Ugh, uh, mm, f okay, just, okay, I'll try it. I wasn't super pumped on it, but I was like, I'll try it. Just because it's such a novelty thing. But this is the vape case. <laughs> this is the vape case. So I guess I'll have to put my iPhone in here. As much as I don't want to, because it's kind of a pain to get in and out. Yep. iPhone 5S. This is the vape case. iPhone 5S. Meet the vape case. Huh. Well, it actually fits in there uh, pretty dang well. Pretty nice. I mean... Uh, that's my, uh, here, let me turn the brightness down so you can see the screen. That's my dog. That's my dog, Gypsy. And uh, the way this works is it's designed to be a case, okay? It's designed to work like a, you know, like a case on an iPhone. Let me unlock the phone so you can see. So this is my phone, and I'm vaping on it. What? What is going on in the world that this is happening? Uh, one of the misconceptions about it, at least for me, my, my interpretation of it was that it somehow connects to your battery port, which uh, does not happen. You can see right there. It has its own battery contained on the back, and it doesn't really affect your phone in any way. The lock button is still very, very accessible. Your volume rocker and, and switches or in your, you know, your your silent switch on the bottom is accessible. Headphone jack is accessible. You can still, uh, the nothing is obstructing the speakers. Um, let's play whatever's on here. Let's play this. So the speakers aren't... Uh, aren't hindered in any way and it actually kind of fits on here and feels really good like if I were to talk on the phone oh hey oh yeah oh no yeah I'm totally gonna yeah there's an atomizer that's poking out here like an antenna and you hang up your phone call and you go okay I should vape I 
I could see being very startled if I was kind of just sitting outside on a break maybe or sitting on the couch using this and you're like, oh, you're taking a nice relaxing vape and then your phone starts ringing and vibrating and you go, holy crap. Oh, okay. It's just, uh, that's right. I have a tank attached to my phone. Um, it does come with an Ego adapter. It comes with a 510 connection on top, but it also comes with an Ego adapter to kind of get it farther away because I feel like the farther away the tank full of e-liquid is from your phone, the better. So you can just put the iClear 30B on here without that Ego adapter, and then it's going to be much, much closer to your phone. It looks like it's just sitting like right on top of the phone, rather, with that Ego adapter. But uh, still works, still functions. The fire button is on this side, and uh, you adjust the voltage on this side, and it's one of those select a voltage things. The bottom one's gonna be the lowest voltage, the middle one's gonna be the middlest voltage, the next one up's gonna be a little higher, and then the top one is obviously gonna be the highest. I haven't been able to check the volts or anything on this. I've been using this iClear 30B on the highest setting, though. And it works, vaping on a freaking phone. There is a battery indicator, so when you turn it off, you're not gonna be able to see this. Those green lights, you see how they were all lit up? That means I have a full battery. And as you're vaping it, when you turn it on and off, those lights will go down until it's on the very bottom one, and then you need to recharge it via the mini USB that's uh, that's right here. And you, you can't see it. Not gonna do an uppy closey. Um, I don't think I'm going to leave this on my phone very long, and my reasons are selfish, because I think it looks silly, and because it doesn't work with the way that I use my phone. And this is going to sound so dumb, but I'm very particular with where my phone is in my car. I store all my music, and I listen to all my podcasts on my phone in the car. And I have this little system set up where I have a, uh, a magnet, this 3M Thing in the back of my phone here and then I can just magnetize it to my dashboard. I just get in the car and I go tunk and it just stays there and I have wires coming out and I can use my phone and this is driving. This is driving and I can use my phone and then I can pull it off and go and then just just set it back on there. And this doesn't really work with that. It makes it a little bit too heavy and it's not magnetic on the back. It's the vape case. It is what it is. Uh, I'll post a link to eSig Supply. In fact, let's go there now. And uh, let's see. Oh, come on. I know, I know eSig Supply is a website. It's not closed. I'm not going to make that, you know, I'm not going to make that problem again. I said the discount vapor was closed and everyone came out of the woodworks to be like, no, it's not. And I was like, I know it's not. I messed up. Lotus vape case, it's only a hundred bucks. It's in stock and it's only a hundred bucks. Here you go. Here's the link. If you have an iPhone 5S and you want to vape on your freaking phone, then boom, there you go. That's uh, that's your thing. So that's all I have right now for the first impressions. There is one, there's two more things. Uh, I might not talk about one of them before I get to some viewer mail and wrap this up. We're running way too long right now. I'm not gonna be able to talk about the Super Nano Coils, Brandon. Guy emailed me, Brandon. I'll still leave a link to it in the description for this new coil he does called the Super Nano Coil. Uh, the vapor production just seemed crazy on it to me. And basically what he does is he wraps his coil around another piece of canthal. So it's like this microscopic little tiny coil. And he said, be sure to not dry burn it. You have to put a bed of cotton underneath and get it nice and wet before you fire it because it's so tiny and so microscopic and so super nano that if you fired it without any liquid it would just break so I was like why well, gotta try this and so I made a note in my vlog notes that I have to try it and I have to talk about it but uh I didn't get to do that unfortunately Brandon maybe Next week in the vlog, I'll make it a point this week to try out the Super Nano Coil. Regardless, I'll put a link to his video in the description to this video. and You can check it out, try it for yourself, let me know if it worked for you because I do really want to try this because it's always fun 
you know, I'm very boring when it comes to coils. Sometimes I do micro coils, but most of the time I do traditional, just wrap it, space it out, you know, spaced out coils. Those seem to work just phenomenal for me. They're easy to do, and I like the performance I get from them. And I've never found a reason to go all crazy and like build these super dragon coils or anything like that. I, I just stick with what works for me. But I did see this and I did want to try it. One subject I do want to touch on before I get to some viewer mail is the TVA show. There's a new podcast out there, the TVA show. In fact, I will link you uh, in the description to just a little blurb that I had posted on GrimGreen.com. But you can listen to it there. I didn't realize it was that far down on the site. There it is, the TVA show, Freeze, uh, from... Uh, from the Vapor Association, uh, the Vaping Association, the Vapors Association. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. The Vaping Association. I think it's called the Vaping Association. But Freeze is the sound guy on uh, ClickBang. Wicked nice guy. I've talked to him from time to time. Uh, and him and his buddy have a new podcast. And uh, I did listen to the first show. And here's my uh, thoughts on it basically disagree with everything they said and that's why I like it because I'll listen to Kevin's show and I'll just be like yes yes Kevin you're right you're right Kevin you're right I agree with everything you're saying yes it doesn't challenge me on any level and I listen to Russ's show click bang and I go yes Russ yes right on you are right on I agree with that and then I listen to the TVA show and I'm like nope Nope, nope, nope. Don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with, uh, uh, you know, what 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 they had said about uh, being angry at Starbucks for not allowing vaping. I didn't agree with that. I didn't agree with what they said about having non vapors uh, start vaping. Um, everything from the subject matter to their their plentiful use of colorful metaphors, um, and that's why I liked it, because I like being challenged like that, and it's a very, very entertaining podcast. I can see myself really getting into this, and if you want to check it out, there is a post on GrimGreen.com regarding the TVA show. They're also on SoundCloud. I believe they have two episodes now, and I've only listened to the first episode. I haven't listened to the other episodes, um, but yeah, Freeze. Freeze is a good guy, uh, and uh, so far, I... Uh, I like his podcast, and I disagree with everything that they say on there, which is exactly why I will keep listening to it. Before this runs too long, it's time to do some viewer mail. Viewer mail. Oh, I just, I love uh, Chinese spam. I get it. I mean, obscene amounts of uh, spam from China. It's it's ridiculous. So first up on the viewer mail, uh, hey Nick, my name is Jeff, uh, and this isn't like a typical question, this is actually a bit more interesting than that. Hey Nick, my name is Jeff, I moved from Sigalikes to Ego Twists to APVs about a year ago after watching your old Taking the Next Step video. Uh, so thanks for that. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you for watching. Anyways, I've been on the hunt for a good DNA20 mod after watching your videos with the Opus D and the K-Fun. I almost ordered a Futara tonight using a Pro Vary at the moment, and I was thinking something similar would be good. But after seeing the problems people are having on ECF, I decided to cancel my order. 21 pages of nothing but praise for these guys right now, so I was thinking this might be something you might want to check out and mention in a vlog or something. There currently aren't any YouTube vids of it, except for one guy just blowing clouds. I'm not affiliated with this guys, and I haven't received mine yet, but they sound pretty awesome. Anyway, take it easy. Keep on vaping, man. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for that link. I will link to Proto Vapor in the description to this video. The mod kind of looks fascinating to me. It kind of reminds me of a Darwin. Um, I haven't seen this before. But it's kind of squarey, like a Darwin was. Does have some big. Uh, why do I always have to tilt my head when I look at these? Because they do it. Oh, there's a mini version. Huh. Proto vapor. It kind of didn't. Um, didn't. Uh, who made the atom? Who made the atom mod? Who made that? Who was it? <laughs> Team Rampage. Um, 
Team Rampage uh, made the Atom mod. And they had a mod that was supposed to come out that was uh, a DNA 20 arrow. Atom. No, the arrow is the hybrid. They had a mod coming out that looked like uh, looked like something like this. Reactor? What was it? Reactor 2? I can't remember the name of it. For some reason, no, that's not it. For some reason, I thought Team Rampage had a video that looked a lot like this. Um, but anyway, it's called the Proto Vapor uh, XPV or XPV Mini. Um, looks cool. Looks like a DNA 20 device. It has an internal 2900 milliamp hour Panasonic NCR18650 PD Hydrain battery. Um, that's great. I, I, I'm really liking the way this uh, is shaping up. And it's $184, which to me, for a DNA20 mod with that kind of, you know, oomph behind it, it's got an ego connection. <laughs> it's square. It kind of looks like a big iTaste MVP version 3. It's got a belt clip on it. Anyway, that's a thing. It's a thing that exists. So thank you, Jeff, for sending this my way. Uh, I'm going to put a link right now uh, in the description to this video for that, for the Proto Vapor. So VP XPV. Thank you, Jeff, for sending that my way. One last question. This is actually a question. Uh, he says... This comes from Yan Chu. I have a question about building dual coils. So, rebuilding atomizers is something we all do pretty frequently. Um, how am I supposed to be sure that both coils are rated at about the same ohms when I'm building on one atomizer? I have the two-in-one ohm voltage meter, and as my way of telling me the ohms, should I build one coil at the ohm I want and build another one telling me the ohms I want for a dual coil? No. Here's what you do. You make your coils exact replicas of each other. And remember that when you're building a dual coil, it splits your ohms in half. So if you want a 1.5 ohm dual coil, you have to build two 3 ohm coils and put attach them and it should say 1.5 ohms when you attach them if everything if you did everything right. Um, it splits it in half. So if you build two 1 ohm coils, it's going to end up at 0.5 ohms total. Does that make sense? So you kind of, I guess the difficult way to do it would be to build a coil, attach it, see what the ohms are, and then build another coil that looks exactly like that. Once you start building more, you can kind of get more of an idea of, I know that with 29 gauge canthal, this many wraps will get me this many ohms. Okay, so if you do nine wraps and then you do another coil with nine wraps and each one is three ohms or each one is two ohms when you attach those it'll split it in half and that's the ohms that you will end up with does that make sense hope that makes sense i think that makes sense that's the way that i do it <clears throat> pardon me it's tasty it's delicious I also need a vape. Good times, good times. Um, one very, very last thing uh, that I'm going to just mention really quick in this vlog. I'll even link you to the beer. I'll even link you to the St. Bernardus ABT 12 that I'm drinking um, on Beer Advocate. Top-notch beer, if you can find it. Um... We're trying to get together a uh, sort of a Carson City Reno vape meet going on. There's going to be a store that's opening up soon in Carson City, and we're planning on having a meet there when it opens. Um, I might be jumping the gun by announcing this, but I'm really excited about it, and we don't know the date of the meet yet. So if you're in the... the uh, Reno Tahoe area and you would like to attend a vape meet at a vape store grand opening then uh, then keep your ear keep your ears peeled sure keep your ears peeled 
Um, obviously, I will make an official announcement somewhere uh, via YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, GrimGreen.com, something like that, when we have something more official. But I am very excited about it. I haven't been to a vape meet since last year's Vape Bash, which we're attending this year's Vape Bash. And so to have something local like that, um, I think would just be a, a whole hell of a lot of fun. And I'm really looking forward to it. So that's something that's happening in the future. Regardless, um, thank you so much, everybody, for watching the vlogs. Like I said, I'll be able to do these when I can. Not sure what I have planned for next week, though. Um... Pardon me. Um, I'm trying to see. Might be Vapor Shark time next week. Might be Vapor Shark time next week. Might be Vapor Shark and uh, might be Cool Fire time next week. It's dumb that I did the first impressions now, but. Huh. No, it's not going to be Cool Fire. I'll, I'll find a rebuildable atomizer to do. I might do the crown. Might do the crown next week and I might do the Vapor Shark DNA next week. Regardless, there's always going to be fun, cool, vapey-tastic stuff coming up. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for checking out the blog. Until next time, let's keep on vaping.